Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, uh, until now, we have been looking at uh, one dimensional uh, steady flows. Uh, we looked at important concepts of uh, uh, stagnation properties, star properties, further on moved on to normal shocks, uh, understood what are shock waves. Okay. So, uh, now, uh, in a, the related con uh, context, uh, still being in the one dimensional case, but we will move uh, to unsteady flows. So, where uh, flow properties um, change uh, with time. So, uh, that is the uh, uh, focus of this module. Uh, so, uh, uh, we will do that elaborately uh, with respect to one particular uh, device, the shock tube. Okay. So, the shock tube uh, is a perfect example of an unsteady uh, gas dynamic unsteady one dimensional problem. Um, a small part of it we had begun towards the later half of the uh, module on normal shocks which was on uh, moving normal shock. So, the moving normal shock actually is an unsteady phenomena, but we saw that by a proper uh, transformation uh, by jumping on to the uh, normal shock. Uh, one could convert uh, the normal shock to a stationary frame. But now we will deal with uh, the shock tube problem which is a 1D unsteady uh, flow problem. Now, it is a device that is used to produce uh, shock waves in a controlled manner and of varying strength uh, in per mostly in the uh, laboratory. And uh, it has several uses for uh, scientific experimentation and uh, mainly uh, it is used in uh, high enthalpy shock tunnels uh, to study uh, aerothermodynamic phenomena of very high Mach number flows. Um, uh, we know when Mach number increases tremendously then uh, uh, the stagnation temperatures and pressures also increase significantly and uh, shock tubes are one way to produce such high pressures and temperatures. Uh, the, they are also used um, to study um, high temperature uh, chemical kinetics, how reactions happen at high temperatures. Uh, also, they have uh, various applications to study interaction of uh, shock waves with materials or structures. Uh, this is relevant to uh, blast waves because these shock waves and uh, um, are also produced during a explosion event and uh, how that affects structures if you want to study in a controlled manner in the laboratory then uh, shock tubes are uh, one of the devices that can help uh, to uh, study them and uh, so, uh, there are several recent researchers uh, which have been, uh, they have been looking at applying these uh, shock waves and shock tube into several other fields like biomedical research and uh, industrial applications uh, like including uh, say preservation of wood, extraction of oil from say sandalwood or even uh, as uh, uh, sort of uh, increasing the flavor of tea. So, uh, people are looking into uh, many, many different applications of uh, the shock tube. So, uh, that device, uh, the shock tube uh, problem uh, is also significant in the context of uh, uh, validating numerical schemes for compressible flow because the, in the perfect gas domain, mm, the shock tube problem uh, uh, is a uh, unsteady problem uh, which can be solved um, analytically and exactly um, for the ideal shock tube, no viscous effects, uh, no viscous, uh, so it is an inviscid um, uh, flow. 
uh, but one can obtain a complete unsteady flow field uh, in uh, one dimension uh, exactly. So, let us look at what is this uh, shock tube and what is the problem. So, uh, it is an unsteady flow. So, there is always an initial condition for the shock tube and the initial condition is that uh, the shock tube consists of uh, it is basically a long tube uh, which has two parts uh, the driver section and the driven section. Okay. So, uh, the driver section and driven section are separated uh, by a uh, diaphragm. Okay. So, uh, this is a diaphragm. Uh, Okay, there is a diaphragm and uh, when uh, sufficiently high pressure is provided uh, in the high pressure uh, driver, uh, then this diaphragm suddenly bursts. Uh, this is how it is practically uh, done and practically these experiments are carried out. Uh, one may also introduce uh, certain plungers to rupture the diaphragm at a specified uh, pressure. So, uh, the pressure differential across the diaphragm is something that is set it is known. Uh, also the gases in general uh, at the high pressure driver side and the driven side can be different uh, depending on the applications that the uh, shock tube is going to be used for. And uh, important uh, parameters of course, are the pressures, uh, temperatures and uh, the speed of sound in both uh, the uh, high pressure and the low pressure section. So, if you look at the initial state, if you look at the pressure profile of a shock tube, uh, it will present a picture uh, that is shown here schematically. Uh, that is, uh, you have high pressure in the driver section and you have uh, low pressure in the driven section and there is a sharp uh, jump across the diaphragm. Uh, the moment uh, the diaphragm bursts, then uh, several things happen in the shock tube and uh, the flow uh, then evolves from there. So, let us uh, look at closely look at how the flow evolves um, the moment um, the shock tube uh, uh, the diaphragm ruptures within the shock tube. Okay. So, uh, as soon as the uh, diaphragm uh, ruptures there is a large pressure difference between uh, the two sections and it is a compressible gas in, in inside the tubes and so uh, you have compressible flow phenomena and uh, ultimately they lead to the formation of shocks. So, uh, uh, as a consequence you have a shock wave that travels within the uh, driven section of the tube. So, uh, this is uh, what is represented as W is a shock wave that moves um, within the driven section of the tube. So, uh, one should be um, careful uh, about the nomenclature that is being used. It is more or less a standard in when describing shock tubes. The driven section uh, is given uh, the uh, number 1. So, all flow variables like pressure, uh, temperature will be referred to with the subscripts 1. So, P 1, T 1 uh, and uh, rho 1. So, A 1. Okay. And uh, in the case of uh, high pressure uh, side, uh, it is uh, P, two, uh, P 4. So, 4 is the uh, uh, nomenclature for the driver section. So, both at the initial state both M 4 and M 1 they are quiescent. So, these are zeros. there is no velocity at all at the uh, beginning. So, uh, this nomenclature one should always uh, keep in mind mm, when describing shock tubes often uh, people refer to uh, P 4 by P 1 or P 2 by P 1. So, what is this 1, 2, 3, 4? They are uh, regions within the uh, shock tube as the shock wave uh, progresses mm, into the driven section. So, the shock wave progresses into driven section. So, driven section is 1. Just behind the shock wave, uh, the region of gas is uh, region 2 and uh, we know that uh, moving shock. So, shock wave when it moves, it 
carries gas with it. it so, that phenomena is quite unlike uh, uh, sound waves. Uh, so, shocks carry gas, so they produce bulk motion of gas and uh, therefore, you have the region 2 where gas is moving. Uh, also, uh, this shock uh, compresses the gas from 1. So, you have pressure uh, is greater than P1, P2 and temperature is greater than T1, density is greater than T1, uh, no, rho 1. So, uh, you have uh, uh, this bulk motion of uh, a compressed gas and uh, please uh, remember all the time uh, that shocks uh, are always supersonic. So, this W by A1, so that is referred to as the shock Mach number ms. W by A1 hmm, is always greater than 1. So, it is always uh, supersonic. Okay. So, uh, now uh, the region 2 comprises of uh, the uh, driven gas uh, which is processed by the shock wave and has been uh, compressed. Okay. Now, uh, initially when uh, the shock tube uh, uh, started out or the shock wave started off, there was a um, differentiation between uh, driver section and uh, driven section. So, now uh, in the driven section a shock wave uh, progresses it compresses the gas and uh, on the other hand in the driven section uh, in the driver section um, you have uh, the expansion waves. So, these expansion waves uh, gradually um, they decrease the pressure in the uh, driver side. Okay. So, uh, uh, these are expansion waves that are uh, shown as uh, uh, a series of waves and uh, that is true for uh, expansion waves because they are not a, a sharp discontinuity like a shock and this is something that we have discussed earlier on uh, that uh, uh, there is no expansion shock, uh, it violates the second law of uh, thermodynamics. So, expansion processes are more gradual and they are isentropic. So, it is true here also, these are expansion waves and they travel uh, left side into uh, the uh, driven uh, sorry driver section. So, there they uh, reduce uh, the pressure. Okay. So, there is a section in between these two, this is section 3, uh, this uh, is the section uh, of uh, driver gas that has been processed by the expansion waves. Uh, so, uh, uh, in uh, if you consider the region between uh, uh, the, uh, the expansion waves and the shock wave, there are two kinds of gas that is one is uh, the driver gas this is coming from driver and there is a driven gas which is uh, mm, processed by a shock wave. And there is an interface that separates these two uh, gases and uh, that uh, interface is uh, known as the uh, contact surface or contact discontinuity. There is it is also a discontinuous surface. Um, but it is within the fluid, there is no solid uh, surface, it demarcates the boundary between driver and driven gases. Uh, so, uh, when one looks at uh, this problem now at a certain intermediate stage, uh, you have shock wave uh, moving to into the driven, uh, driven section and uh, expansion waves moving um, into the uh, driver section and a contact uh, surface in between. So, uh, let us uh, look at uh, how the pressures and uh, temperatures uh, vary um, between at uh, different sections uh, due to these different waves. So, if you look at uh, the pressure, so uh, pressure, uh, so you can see that here you have the uh, shock wave moving, suddenly the pressure increases uh, across the shock okay. and then uh, you have uh, the uh, pressure remaining constant all through until uh, the uh, expansion waves. Okay. So, um, if you uh, see uh, if you go back to the picture that is over here, the contact surface is not a solid surface. So, 
across the contact surface uh, pressure uh, remains constant. So, P 3 is actually equal to P 2 and uh, same way um, the velocity of the gas uh, also is a constant u 3 is equal to u 2 which in this case is also is written as u p. This is uh, also coming from the piston analogy we were discussing uh, in the beginning of the uh, normal shocks. And so, uh, you can consider this as a, a piston uh, that is driving the shock um, that is moving ahead. Okay. So, uh, that uh, problem also has uh, uh, relations to the shock tube problem. So, uh, sometimes uh, it is also referred to as U p. So, U 3 equal to U 2 is the boundary condition. So, boundary condition across the contact surface is P 3 equal to P 2 U uh, 3 equal to U 2. So, uh, because uh, of the contacts there is no difference in the pressure uh, across the contact surface it remains all through uh, both region 2 and 3 and then um, you see uh, that there is a, a decrease of uh, gradual decrease of pressure uh, from uh, P 4. So, this is P 4 and this is P 1. Okay. Now, uh, what happens to uh, temperature immediately at the uh, location of the shock uh, the uh, pressure increases to T 2 uh, sorry temperature increases to T 2. Uh, now, the boundary condition at the contact surface is only for pressure and uh, velocity and uh, they uh, do not uh, necessarily hold good for temperature and uh, density. So, temperature and density can vary and uh, they vary discontinuously that is why uh, contact surface is also called as uh, contact discontinuity. Mm, the regions of driver and driven to start with need not have same uh, temperatures or densities they can be even of different uh, gases. So, uh, so, now there is a discontinuity here so that is T 3. Okay. So, this uh, discontinuity in temperature also manifests in discontinuity of density uh, this is consistent with the ideal gas law. So, this is density rho 1 and rho 4 this is the contact discontinuity. So, uh, always when you want to look at contact discontinuity it is always good to look at the uh, density profile uh, there and the contact discontinuity is shown very clearly or the temperature profile, but uh, pressure or velocity will not uh, give you a, a, any information on uh, the uh, contact discontinuity. So, this is V 3 equal to V 2 P 3 equal to P 2. So, uh, at any instant um, after the rupture of the diaphragm assuming that the shock wave is instantaneously formed uh, uh, the general picture of the flow within the shock tube is uh, plotted in various graphs here. This is how the uh, pressure density temperature and velocity profiles look and uh, the uh, through the course of this module we will come up and understand how to uh, solve the various equations. So, that we can come to this uh, uh, profiles. Okay. So, uh, now uh, the uh, shock wave uh, can go all the way suppose this uh, shock tube is closed at both the ends um, then uh, the shock wave proceeds um, all the way towards the end of the uh, shock tube. So, at the end um, there is a solid wall and uh, uh, boundary condition there is that uh, the flow cannot penetrate inside the solid wall. So, uh, the uh, bulk motion of gas that was happening behind uh, the shock with a velocity u 2 uh, on meeting the wall should abruptly uh, stop uh, or come uh, to a velocity as soon as it meets the wall its velocity should become 0. Okay. Uh, so, uh, 
the way the flow accomplishes this uh, task is by creating a reflected shock, another shock which now progresses into uh, uh, the uh, U2 section, okay, U2 section or region 2 and then further on, but we are focusing on the region 2 section where the reflected shock goes in and as soon as the reflected go shock goes into uh, through the gas in region 2, uh, behind it the um, shock converts uh, the velocity to 0 and this is uh, stagnant gas, stagnant gas. Of course, now uh, a shock has uh, passed through the section 2 uh, twice uh, that is um, of, uh, section 2 was initially uh, a result of the processed uh, shock first uh, primary shock processed gas and now uh, another shock wave passes through uh, the region 2. So, now you can expect a significant increase of uh, uh, pressure and temperature after the reflected shock has gone through the, uh, uh, the, the region 2. So, uh, now uh, this uh, region after the reflected shock has passed is named as region 5. So, that is the uh, uh, region 5. So, uh, uh, often people describe P5 by P1 and T5 by T1. So, when uh, one looks at applications of uh, shock tube, uh, you can have uh, several applications, one where you use only the uh, primary shock, you do not look at any reflected shock. Uh, in that uh, sense, usually uh, some kind of an apparatus will be attached directly to uh, this uh, section without having any uh, end wall. Mm. And uh, the shock just progresses on into the device. Example of such devices are uh, shock tunnels, which are wind tunnels attached to a uh, shock tube to look at very high Mach number flows or high enthalpy flows. Uh, and um, this flow just goes on into the uh, test section and uh, behind you can have a, uh, a motion of gas. So, this is the slug of gas, uh, which is useful for testing. Uh, and since this uh, processes happen very fast, uh, W is always supersonic, uh, these uh, shock tubes produce uh, uh, typical uh, testing times which are uh, very, very short uh, of the orders of uh, milliseconds. Okay. So, uh, that is the key uh, point here, but they can produce very high pressures and temperatures. Uh, when you need much higher temperatures and pressures than uh, what is produced in this scenario, uh, we can use uh, certain uh, devices um, so that uh, a reflection of the shock is produced and uh, this stagnant gas after reflection is of much higher pressure and temperature that can be used for uh, other uh, certain experiments. So, both kinds of uh, uh, uses are there. Uh, this kind of operation is known as reflected uh, mode, mode of operation. Okay. So, uh, let us look at this. So, now you see uh, that uh, what happens upon reflection, the same shock tube problem which we started with. Now, this is, uh, uh, this is a pressure profile. Uh, we were having P2 here, P2 remains uh, constant. But the moment ref, a reflection of shock happens, you can see the sudden jump that is produced by the reflected shock. Okay, so, uh, this is uh, P5. Now, you can uh, see in the density also, uh, you are having uh, the uh, reflected shock here, rho 5 and similarly T5 in the temperature profile. So, this was T2 the shock is moving into uh, P2, T2 and uh, Rho 2. So, uh, it produces significant jump. Uh, and on the other hand, in the velocity, the moment it reflects uh, U5 is uh, 0. So, uh, uh, if you look at the flow features that are uh, present in a shock tube, 
So, you understand that um, basically you started off the initial condition is that you have region 4 which is the driver side high pressure uh, and region 1 which is driven side uh, low pressure in between there is a uh, diaphragm or there is a separation and at t equal to 0 uh, that separation is removed and instantaneously uh, there is a large pressure difference that um, uh, appears between uh, the driver and driven sides of the gas and uh, consequence of that is a wave structure is set up in the shock tube uh, consisting of a uh, shock wave that goes into the driven section and uh, a expansion waves that move into the driver section and uh, the uh, surface or uh, the ima sort of virtual boundary that separates uh, both uh, the driver and the driven sides is the contact uh, discontinuity or contact surface and across the contact surface pressures and velocities are the same. Further on uh, the shock waves going and hitting at the end wall get uh, reflected back the condition at that uh, reflection is that uh, the sh uh, shock should uh, process uh, the gas that is bulk motion of gas that is coming towards it with the velocity u2 is converted to uh, stagnant gas or u5 is equal to 0. The expansion waves similarly can reflect from the uh, driver side end wall and uh, they continue to expand. So, a shock wave has reflected as a shock similarly an expansion wave they would uh, reflect as expansion waves and further reduce uh, pressure. So, now uh, the uh, aim throughout this module is to uh, model this understand this mathematically how to get the uh, solutions what are the equations. Uh, and towards that uh, we will have to look at uh, various uh, concepts uh, both uh, flow physics as well as uh, some of them mathematical in nature. So, we will go through them in detail uh, we will start with uh, uh, because it is all wave dominated flows you see expansion waves and uh, there are so many waves here. So, we start with the simple waves. Uh, linear waves of pressure as very small perturbations of pressure and density which are nothing but sound waves and then we look at much larger uh, strength waves finite waves and then uh, we will see how these uh, equations of finite waves model the expansion waves uh, in the shock tube. Uh, the high pressures uh, the uh, compression part of it which is done by the shock wave. Uh, is already uh, modeled by the moving normal shock we have to just uh, change the frame of reference. So, that part is already covered, but we will look at uh, in detail at the expansion side and then couple all of them together to give us the complete solution for uh, the shock tube uh, problem. A very uh, useful way of representing um, these waves and flow features in a shock tube is the x t diagram. So, uh, where you uh, see uh, all the different uh, flow features this is shock contact discontinuity and the expansion fan uh, represented in an x t uh, diagram. So, uh, shock has a certain velocity. So, this uh, slope of course, here is d t by d x which is 1 by w. So, that is the velocity. So, dx by dt is velocity. So, shock uh, runs very quickly it is uh, supersonic contact discontinuity is slower expansion fans move into the uh, driver section. Now, the moment reflection happens so this is a reflected wave uh, and it turns everything after it passes through it turns the various uh, uh, velocity. So, u 5 is 0 as a consequence you see that the contact is continuously goes, uh, goes still ok. So, this is the uh, picture of ideal shock tube 
uh, in the next uh, class we will begin with waves and then proceed from there towards all the other uh, topics.